out there, we're back to play my Choose Your Own Adventure board game. Uh, hopefully my sound sounds okay. I'm playing music. And then I have Nerd talking down the hallway. And he's supposed to be raiding me here in a second. So, we can get started. because of that this uh, cup slipper thingy on it and this is the Hayanensis. I have no idea if I'm saying that right Hayanensis. Paphiopetal Hayanensis. and I love it so much and I wanted to introduce you all to my other hobby besides streaming maybe you all do that for every stream I'll introduce you to a new plant my mom has good luck with orchids. We got her some pretty pandas. Nice. My mom does too, and my dad. Well, my dad's working on it. But my mom has one that she's had for a few years, and it has like a few different stalks on it with tons of flowers on it that last so long, and I'm super jealous. My other three, uh, well, I have two that have been struggling from root rot because they were like one of my first plants, so I was like still trying to figure it out, but they're surviving. And then Nerd got me a new one last year that's coming back, so. Uh, yeah, anyway, I wanted to show you guys that. Show and tell. Okay. So, um, looking at our game board here, we were at the planet Eruth and Kronor last week. And today we're starting on the planet Silica. We are on a quest to find the evil power master before he completes his plan to destroy this uh, system. Um, and we are part of the Rapid Force crew. GM Workshop needs to go away and be with his family because that's more important. <laughs> Um, these are our cast of char- no. This is our cast of characters. Oh, Dante's not active. I made some edits from last week. Um, cause we were having con- I was having confusion about the difference in the different items. There's challenge boosters and assist items, so I kind of differentiated those to help us Future, so I think that will work out better. Uh, no, 
we still have Flip though, I'm sorry. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started on the planet Silica. Unless anyone has any questions. No? Okay. Um, let me show you this picture of, I brought like this little backing here to help focus. This little picture of Dante piloting our ship to the planet Silica. And let's see what happens. Dante pilots the ship toward the surface of Silica, a planet composed almost entirely of glass. Before the Purple Days War, Silica was a planet covered in deserts. The Silicans were peaceful sand farmers, supplying the Lacunian system with refined silica for all manner of electronic devices. Isn't that like the silica packets they put in packages to keep the moisture out? Is that right? That's what that sounds like. In his first recorded attack, apparently launched on a lark, a teenage evil power master aimed heat missiles at Silica and its moons. The resulting inferno transformed most of the planet into glass and turned its moons into prisms. It's almost painfully beautiful, says Terra, as the ship flies over crystal forests and mirror lakes. This sounds like that um, planet... Uh, it starts with a K in Star Wars, where they have like the red sand on, underneath the white and there's like the crystal foxes. What's that called? What's that planet called? Pop quiz! It's my happy birthday! What are you doing? It's not my birthday! Yes, it is! It is tomorrow, it's not today! I'm not gonna see you a lot. This makes sense tonight. Okay, it's a beautiful bag. Look, chat, it's a flower bag. Whose birthday is tomorrow? We're doing this on stream? Yeah. It's not like panties or anything. I'm playing a game! I had to get you before you started. I had to do it quietly because you left the door open. You're my wife, my everything. That's a lot of text. You don't have to read that. Well, I'm reading everything else. Thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome. It's beautiful. Because I won't see you until tomorrow afternoon. If you have dinner, you have time to Yay! I got Dune! Which is why you got it tonight, because you're playing a space game. I love it. I'm glad. Thank you. You're welcome. I love the targets right around the block. I'm going to read it right now. Okay, chat, we're going to read something else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anyway, go back there and play my game with me. So he glassed the planet. He glassed the planet in the past. The resulting inferno transformed most of the planet into glass and turned its prism moons into prisms. It's almost painfully beautiful, says Terra, as the ship flies over crystal forests and mirror lakes. Light from the nearby star refracts through the interior of the planet, creating a kaleidoscope of color. It's gonna get bright, folks, says Chen. Disco ball bright, adds Flipto. We're going to need some serious shades, chirps Dante. And we get an item card. Is it some shades? Some super fly shades. It is. It is. Hang on. I need to figure this out. Red sunglasses. 
Standard issue rapid force sunglasses, optimized to make the wearer appear super rad to anyone who sees them. This is a challenge booster. It gives us uh, plus one to diplomacy. Read. There we go. <laughs> plus one to diplomacy. Because it makes us look super rad. So we need to choose an item, uh, choose a character to give this item to. Um, Commander Chen has a negative one to diplomacy, so does Flipto. Terra and Dante have a plus one to diplomacy. Uh, so we could boost Chen and Flipto to just uh, zero on the roll for diplomacy, or we could give Terra and Dante plus two instead of a plus one. So let me give you guys a poll and hopefully it works. supposed to go hang out with your family. She had to refresh, so maybe that was it. I don't know. I don't know. It was just the refresh. I don't know. Did you guys vote? Are you done? We took them skating. We're good for a bit. Okay. Whatever. Sounds like fun. Is it ice skating or roller skating? Ice skating is really hard. Tara gets the super rad sunglasses. Sunglasses. Diplomacy plus one. Ice skating. Oof. Did you ice skate or just the kids? Did you and Hootie ice skate? That would wear me out. Also because I have a bum leg and it would be really painful. <laughs> but we're working on it. Physical therapy, yay! Uh, okay, now we have our sunglasses. The evil power master signal originated near a town called Rainbow Alto, says Flipto. He provides Dante with coordinates, and soon the ship is zooming across Silica Valley, the planet's largest remaining desert, toward a quaint village of glass at the edge of the dunes. Be careful, calls Chen as the droid lands on a sheet of glass outside town. The warning is a bit late. Several large cracks spider out from the landing gear as the ship settles into place. Tread lightly, you delightful clodhoppers, says Dante as the crew leaves the ship. Chen glares at the hovering droid. The crew enters Rainbow Alto, a typical tourist town of wide streets lined with shops. The shops, being made entirely of glass, don't need signs, because tourists can see what's being sold inside with a quick glance. We still don't know the name of the store. They need a sign to know what the name of the store is. Where do we start? asks Tara. Perhaps with those two suspicious looking people, replies Flipto, pointing at a female glass silicon and a male sand silicon. So even the people are made of glass and sand? That's wild. They are whispering to each other between two shops across the street. Don't point, hisses Chen at Flipto. That's just impolite. But the two silicons already caught sight of the rude Martian's finger, and the suspects run off in different directions. Ooh, there's an interesting picture. Let's 
see if we can make this work. There we go. One's made of glass and the other made of sand. Interesting. Okay. Let me ask you. Do we follow the glass silicon or follow the sand silicon? Do we only have Flipto available right now? Yes. So every time we are faced with a challenge, we choose one character to complete the challenge, one active character. Once the challenge is over, then that active character is made inactive. Once all characters are made inactive, they all reactivate again. I remember and when they're all used it. Yes, exactly. You got it. But I want to toss Flip though it's <laughs> I think it's a dumb name. What would you name him? Do you want us to rename him? Would you like that? Would that please you? Okay. Go ahead and decide what Flipto's name should be. He's from... Let me give you a little um, background on him. He's from Mars. Okay, you just go ahead. All right. I don't know if I can fit all that. There we go. You're welcome. Too late. Uh, Alright, we're gonna follow the sand silicon. This is gonna be fun trying to remember to change the name as I read the cards. Sand silicon is number five. The glass silicon disappears down another street, but the sand silicon runs into an alley his sandy limbs undulating like rolling desert dunes. That's cool. The crew gives chase. At the other end of the alley, the sandy suspect has disappeared. A thin trail of sand points the way toward the edge of town. Hurry, says Tara, or we'll lose him in the desert. The sand trail weaves through town, but prismatic rainbows make it hard to see the culprit. The crew finally catches sight of him as he steps off the edge of the glassy plateau above Silica Valley. They run to the edge and gaze into the sandy valley, but the sand silicon is gone. Dunes extend as far as they can see with waves of blowing sand. The only break in the sea, sand sea is a craggy, prismatic glass peak to the west. Can we track him? Asks Chen with little hope in his voice. Okay, we have a required challenge. We only have Rex available to us um, to do this challenge. And if we look at our game board, we are in the challenge level level of six. So we need a six. We need at least a six. <laughs> I was trying to <laughs> do math. Um, we need at least a six to complete the challenge. Now, luckily, Rex has the mainframe, the ro remote, blah, blah, remote mainframe access gives him a perception plus one, which means we would only, we need to at least roll a five. So. Uh, although we have assist items available to us, the rocket fuel doesn't matter. Not for this, it's not helpful. The grabber stick would retrieve a discarded item. Um, we have a couple things that we could retrieve. The pain reducer or the shelter belt. The pain reducer reduces the challenge level by one. And the shelter belt gives us an automatic win. 
Um, so we could do that, or we could save the grabber stick for a different challenge later on. Um, let me go ahead and ask you guys. reduces the challenge level by one which means it would be a five instead of a six which means with his perception plus one we would have to just roll at least a four okay you guys want to use a grabber stick for the pain reducer okay so with that That was a one-time use item, by the way. The assist items are one-time use. So now it's gone. The pain reducer now brings us to a challenge level of five. So we need at least a four. So go ahead, chat, and type in exclamation roll to see if we win this challenge. need at least a four. That's not a four. Okay. Womp womp. Good start. We're gonna raise one, two. I blame Double A for not being here. It's his fault. even worse, wasn't it? The crew treks across the desert toward the crystal mountain. After the tromping around a few sand dunes, they arrive at the mountain. A cascade of rainbow... A cascade of rainbows runs down the side like a waterfall. A figure can be seen at the top of the glass mountain. I guess we climb, says Rex. Tara and Chen pour sand out of their shoes before starting, while Rex blows dust off his feet. Okay, we have a strength challenge to climb the mountain. And because we used Rex in our last challenge, everyone becomes active. And we get to decide who is going to complete the mountain climbing challenge. Uh, let me give you the poly doodad. This is a strength challenge. And it doesn't look like anyone has a challenge booster for strength. So that's fun. Um, before I give you the poll, playing a military game? Oh, okay. Uh, Chen has a plus one to strength. No one else has any advantage to strength. Dante has a negative one to strength. military game. Wait, what? Oh no! <laughs> See, I had a little copy-paste uh, thing there. Hold on. Let me fix it. So that Rackham can stop freaking out. Are 
we go. Better? <laughs> Good, okay. I'm glad we worked that out. Yes, yes, I know. Okay. Chen has no challenge boosters for strength. So he has a plus one naturally. So we need a five or better. Go ahead and do exclamation roll. See if we do it. To five. That's not a five. This game gets hard at the end. Yikes. This might, uh, this, uh, might not go well for us today. Oh no, this is one of those where we have to keep trying until we succeed. Alright, signal trap. Oh no, wait. EPM. Oh, they have a typo here. It says EMP. Whoops. Goes up. One, two. Another active character must try. Yikes. There's no items to help us, so Rex and Terra um, have plus zero. Dante has negative one. So um, let me pull you guys. Let's gift sub, GM. You didn't have to do that. You dingus. Thank you. <laughs> You're dingus, though. Yeah, rockets! Rockets! Woo! What's happening? Oh, their pull. Rex. Uh, alright. Do exclamation roll. We need a six. That's not a six. <laughs> That's all right, double A's here. Maybe he'll roll sixes. Have fun with your ice cream. That sounds delicious. Um. Bye. Have a good weekend. Thanks for being here. See you next time. Take care. Raise by two. Rex is now not active. All right, this is gonna be bad for us. This is gonna be bad. Who's gonna go next? Hi, Inkfish! How are you? Welcome in. We're doing terribly. We keep failing at this challenge of climbing a mountain. It's a strength challenge. Dante has negative one strength. Terra has no advantage or disadvantage to strength. We need to roll a six, which is the challenge rating. For this. It's not going well. If we had that grabber stick, if we would have saved the grabber stick for this challenge, uh, we wouldn't be in this mess. <laughs> yeah, we need to get our crap together. Alright, we're going to go with Tara. Tara's gonna climb the mountain. She needs to roll a six. 
Go ahead and type in exclamation roll to see if she climbs up the mountain. Hi, Black Rose. Thanks for the lurk. Oh, my lurk alert didn't work. You rolled a four. Oh, no. My lurk alert didn't work. Hold on. Time out. Let me test something. I was actually playing with these a little bit earlier, but it should work. And I want it to work. It's on. I know. <laughs> It's just not gonna work. There's supposed to be text that comes after it. I don't know. I can't get things to work for some reason. I'm not good at the streaming stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Alright, go lurk then. <laughs> okay, Tara failed with nerds four. She is now inactive. The EPM meter is gonna go up by two. One, two. Push-ups! No one rolled a one. Or I didn't... No, that's not how that works. We don't do push-ups here. You know what we do here? We drink. <laughs> Yes, double A. He's gonna get us killed. Panda's raiding! Welcome in, raiders. Hope you had a good stream. I think you're doing your weekly campaign. Thanks for coming. We're drinking! Drinks! Hi, Steven Hyde. Welcome. Should have showed up sooner. Yes, double A needed to be here to keep us out of trouble. We're getting dangerously close to the evil power master completing his evil mission. Uh, it's not going well. Um, all we have left to help us climb the mountain is our droid, Dante. He has a negative one to strength. For this challenge. We have to roll a six because that's what the challenge rating is. So it's automatically a fail. Right? I mean, it's not, not even a point in rolling that because we can't roll. It's not. No. No. Uh, no. He has a negative one, so it's a four. So, for failing us again, we're gonna raise the evil power master meter by one, two on our game board. Getting closer and closer to this explosion of number 25. <laughs> Double A, I don't know what you're rolling. Are you guys just testing out rolls? That's not how this works. Someone roll a seven <laughs> on a D6? Mm, good luck with that. You keep trying. Gotta get those. <laughs> okay, so we used Dante. That was our last available character. That means everyone else is active again. By the way, for those who are in here for the first time, we are playing the. Uh, where is it? We are playing the Choose Your Own Adventure board game. War with the Evil Power Master. Which is me reading from this big old deck of cards from the story. And as we go along, we are making choices of which way the story goes and completing or failing miserably at challenges. Right now we're failing miserably at challenges. So we have all of our characters back active. 
Um, so we need to decide who is next going to try and climb this gosh darn mountain. Uh, I advise Chen because Chen is the only one with a plus one to strength. We have no items to help us. I'll give you a poll anyway. Because that's the point. It's Twitch plays, not me tell you what to do. <laughs> so, go ahead and vote, chat, for who will complete, try, try to complete this challenge. Chen, who has a plus one to strength. Or everyone else. <laughs> Anyone else. We need to roll, we're gonna roll a d6, and we have to roll a six to win the challenge. Let me show you why. On our game board, we have two meters going from the bottom up. The green one is our signal tracker of us trying to find the evil power master. There's three different levels. On the bottom is four challenge level, then five, then six. Our little blue icon is in the six range, which means anytime we come across a challenge, we're gonna roll a d6, and to win the challenge, it has to be a six. We have a three-way tie, wonderful. How did that work? Because nerd picked three. Double A picked one, inked fish picked one. Who picked four? Did it break? Black Rose, the challenge is to climb a mountain on the planet Silica. Dante is an auto loss. Inked voted for Dante. Inked, it says one on Dante. Oh. I'm confused. I thought I just took the numbers. I've never seen that before. I thought I was just taking the number. Let me test something. Huh. I've never seen them before. Interesting. Okay. We're going with Chen. Yeah, I had no idea to accept a text. That's crazy. So, with Chen who has a plus one to strength, we need to roll at least a five. So, chat, go ahead and type in exclamation roll. Yeah, I didn't, I don't remember that happening. Exclamation roll, we need at least a five. Black Rose, all we needed was you to roll the dice for us to win. Well done. We finally climbed this mountain. Commander Chen is now inactive. Let's see what happens. Raise the signal tracker by two. One, two. Oh, it's so close. We might do it. We might. We're gonna draw a data card. This data card, let me just show you. I like to show you guys the pictures. Hopefully I can get this focus. There we go, that's a perfect prism. Let's see what that's about. As the crew climbs, a shard of the mountain breaks off in Rex's hand. Amazingly, it is a perfectly formed prism that can be used for measuring distances on three-dimensional star charts. It can also be used as currency on Lacos. This item gives us a plus two to piloting. See that? That's the piloting icon, plus two. So it's a challenge booster that gives us a plus two on our dice roll. So let me give you guys a poll of which character we give this item to. And if you're wondering why
Flipto's name is now Rex McCheese. It's because a certain someone named Rackham was complaining about Flipto's name and christened him now Rex McCheese. <laughs> um, so piloting. We could give this plus two to someone that either already has a advantage to piloting, which would give them a plus three, which would be pretty helpful, especially when we have to roll and uh, we have to get a six value to complete challenges. Or we could boost someone that has a negative to piloting, which is Chen and Terra. Um, so I will let chat decide. There's the poll. Rex and Dante have a plus one right now. Tara and Chen have a negative one. Hi, who they? It, um, this item gives us a plus two to piloting. Was that your question? Yeah. Welcome in, who they. Glad you could be here. We're voting to see who gets this perfect prism challenge booster, which gives a plus two to piloting. It allows us to measure distances on three-dimensional star charts. Pretty cool. We have a tie. Oh no. Who's, who hasn't voted yet? Black Rose is uh, lurking, supposedly, even though Black Rose keep popping up in chat. <laughs> Having the negative is a bigger hindrance. I mean, yeah. Well, it looks like we have a tie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Black Rose. Appreciate. All right, it's gonna go to Tara. We're gonna give Tara the perfect, well, let's just say prism. Pilot plus one. Oh, plus two. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. Plus two. It's pretty nice. Okay. Atop the mountain, the crew encounters a glass hermit sitting outside a glass cave. The nearby rainbow falls reflect from her crossed legs. Let me show you a picture. journey, but first you must answer my eternal question. Prisma points at a jar-shaped glass organ inside her torso that holds some unknown liquid. Am I half full? She asks. Or am I half empty? Alright. The choice is yours, chat, as I get my poll dude. Torso holds some uh, as a glass that holds some kind of liquid. Is she half full or is she half empty? Riddle. Ooh. Got some pessimists in chat, I see. <laughs> That's what that means, right? If you're an optimist, you're half full. Or if you're a pessimist, you're half empty. All right, we're gonna go with half empty. I see you are 
are searchers, people who always want more, says Prisma. The answers you seek can be found at the base on the other side of the mountain. She gestures behind her. You mean we spent all this time trying to get up this mountain and now we're going to go back down? Just like that. What do we even get for it? The crew reaches the base of the crystal mountain. It is surrounded on all sides by sand. If there is a secret lair in the desert, it must be here. They search in silence for hours, looking for unnaturally straight cracks or curved crevices that might indicate a doorway. The sun beats down rel relentlessly, turning the mountain into a prismatic cone. Finally, Rex's keen eyes spot a pale flat splash of pink standing out from the spectrum of colors reflecting through the mountain. The crew rushes over to the spot to see pink graffiti spray-painted on a sheer cliff. In large capital letters, it says, Evil Power Master rules, everybody else drools. With a Z at the end instead of an S. Uti raided with ten people. Thanks for coming in, Uti and raiders. Welcome. We are playing a... Choose your own adventure board game war with the evil power master. There it is. Welcome in. We are on a sand glass planet trying to find the evil power master. Does the evil power master have a fan club here on Silica? Chen asks. Nope, says Tara, unimpressed. I know that script. This was written by the evil power master himself. He was always had crappy handwriting. See those loops on the Z's? They indicate deep-seated brutal aggression, Dante peeps adorably. Realizing the graffiti must mark the entrance to the evil power master's lair, the crew searches for some way to open the secret door. If any active or inactive character has data number 79, let me see, let me see, nope, of course not. We would have automatically won the challenge if that was the case. Uh, thanks for the follow, Jackpool. I almost bought this the other day when I saw it, immediately thought of you, mate. Oh, yeah, I love, um, these Choose Your Own Adventure board games, this is the second one. Pretty sure there are only two. And I'm gonna be really excited if they make more, because they are amazing. I love them. I love playing them with you guys. Like, I know, Uti, you keep telling me about these video games that kind of do the same thing, but I really like taking these cards and, like, making this... Like, I like all this work I put into making... I really like making things. So... To put this together and try and figure out how it all works for a stream is pretty fun to me. I really like it. I hope you guys are having fun. Um, so, if we would have had a certain data card, we would have automatically won this upcoming challenge. We don't. I'm pretty sure. Let me double check. It might be in our stack. No, we do not. So, we have a required challenge to open this secret door. It is a perception challenge. We have available to us Rex, who has a plus one to perception naturally. He also has a challenge booster we could use for this challenge. A mainframe access, which would give him another perception plus one. Um, Tara has a negative to perception. Dante has nothing to helpful with perception. Um, but this is a, uh, Twitch play, so I'm gonna give you guys a poll to decide who is going to complete this challenge. Let me get that poll going. As 
as we use different characters, they go inactive, so that's why we only have three of our four characters available to choose from. And only one character can participate in a challenge. And in order to win the challenge, we, or lose, to do the challenge, we'd have to roll a d6 die. Yes, type your number to vote. Yes, thank you. Looks like Rex is the popular one. That's good. He has a plus two to perception. That would be super helpful. All right. Looks like we're going with Rex. Now, before we move further, um, we have to decide whether or not we're going to use a challenge booster. If we roll a one on the challenge, any challenge booster that we're using, um, is automatically lost forever. Um, so I just want to give you guys the choice of whether we even use one or not. I highly advise using one. We're in the end game, and it would be really helpful. I'm just gonna ask you guys though. I mean, I probably don't need to ask. The skill challenge is perception. We have to have a six to win the challenge. Burn everything, use it all. Yeah, I agree, Uti. Having a plus two would help us get to that six or higher. You all agree. I'm glad you all agree. It makes sense. I just want to ask, though. Hi, Chinook. How are you doing? Welcome in. And our rolls are garbage. Yes. Okay, go get coffee. We'll wait. Just kidding. <laughs> we'll be here when you get back. Okay. So we're gonna use our challenge booster. So we need to roll at least a four to win this challenge. So, chat, go ahead and type in exclamation roll. We need at least a four. Let's see that four. Ooh, it's not a four. Yikes. <laughs> oh no. That was not good. We lost our challenge booster. Rex is now inactive <sighs> oh no epm meter is gonna go up by one two and another active character must try so <laughs> who is next tara or Dante. Tara has a minus one to perception. Dante has no advantage or disadvantage to perception. Tara is an auto fail. Oh, that's right. You're right. So it has to be Dante. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Go ahead and uh, do exclamation roll for Dante. We need to have a six. We must roll a six. Go ahead and roll. Needs to be a six. If it's not a six, we're gonna lose. That's not a six, that's a two. <laughs> it's broken. What's broken? You think I'm not doing this right? Or you think the dice is broken? The sixes? What do you mean? Elaborate. That we have to have a six? Oh 
we can't roll it. No, we've had it before. Are you just being silly or are you being serious? I'm scrolling up chat to see if we rolled a six before. It's not broken. Like, I know it's in there. <laughs> okay. Did I... Uh, Ink, you broke it. <laughs> Did I raise the power meter yet? I got distracted. No, I didn't. One. Two. Black Rose, you're perfect. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Nerds complaining. That he can't roll a six like I th we think you did. It is shenaniganry. So. Dante failed. Tara has to do it next. She automatically loses because she has negative one. Hi, Crow. Thanks for the lurk. Welcome. Um, We lost this challenge again. Because... Tara has negative one. She cannot possibly roll a six. So we <laughs> we um, reach this big ol' uh, explodey 25. Now I need to look at the rule book to see what happens when uh, we get to the big Currently gaming some peeves. Okay, cool. Have fun. Thanks for the support. Uh, okay, end game. <laughs> Short stream. If the EPM meter reaches 25, the Rapid Force crew has failed and the evil Power Master is victorious. We need to draw a story card. to see how how our failure uh, manifests. Well done, Jet. <laughs> it's time to see how the evil power master accomplished his evil evil thing. Now we have to see based on where our signal tracker is. Suddenly, Dante rises four feet in the air and spins rapidly, then stops with a jerk. The crew is startled. A large hologram projects from Dante's eye. The voice comes from Dante's speakers. This is a message from the Lacunian Emergency Broadcast System. The Alliance is under attack. The crew watches live as every planet in the Lacunian system explodes, one by one. He did it, whispers Terra. The evil Power Master destroyed everything. Realizing that the planet they are on is doomed, the crew races through the fizzlet and flies into a nearby black hole to escape the system's destruction. After exiting the black hole, the fizzlet reappears into a fully intact Lacunian system. Confused, they land on Lacus and step into the Great Hall during a meeting of Congress just as it's interrupted by a booming, metallic voice. The voice of the evil Power Master. Give up, fools! Your time has come! Give me total control of the system where planets will perish, including Haymok, Eruth, and Earth. You have three days to comply. The hall erupts in chaos. Maybe, Chen asks, we try again? says 
uh, the end. Or is it? So we basically traveled back in time to the beginning. <laughs> the evil Emperor Zerg has defeated us. Yes. Um. So we've traveled back in time to the beginning. So, I know, Double A. Well, Double A, it is your fault, because you weren't here to prevent this catastrophe. Our ship is back here on Blakehoose. If time has reset, then... I'm trying to figure out how we... Does the game just restart? I mean, it, it can. So I'm resetting the board because we've traveled back in time. your screen. It's fine. What? It's yesterday again. I hate that. Friday sucked. I'm sorry your Friday sucked. Um. Okay. So we've been to Kronor. We've been to Eru. We've been to Silica. I'm trying to figure out how to approach this. We can start over. We have plenty of planets left to uh, explore. So, I think we just do that? I need to reset the board, or I need to reset stuff. Um, so talk amongst yourselves? I don't know. <laughs> this is uh, not something I expected. I mean, I don't want to just end the game right now. Right? You guys don't want that. And we still have plenty left to do in the game. Um, just reset and let's start again. Yeah. Wow. It's gonna take me a few minutes. I have to put all these cards back in order. So how was your day? Uti had a terrible day yesterday. It is... Saturday morning for you, I believe. It's my birthday on in your world. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Ha 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 ha. Funny. Tomorrow, we are going to an off-Broadway play called My Fair Lady. You may have heard of it. I got tickets um, for me and my mom and Nerd. I get tickets for me and my mom every year to an off-Broadway show, for the most part, except for COVID. Canceled one year, which sucked. Um, but My Fair Lady is, like, my favorite movie. And when I saw that it was playing on my birthday, I was like, well, shoot, let's just make it a combined Christmas birthday fiesta. <laughs> so, that's what we're doing tomorrow. I hope I don't lose any cards. I'm missing number six. Don't worry.
that is um super nice of you guys, Uti and Panda for the raids. That's fun. Streamer community, yay! I wonder if we'll do better this time. It it this game's not as uh well we died a lot. Happy anniversary of the day. Oh no, I'm not reading the rest of that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the reminder of how uh, I came into this world. That's lovely. Alright, our data cards are reset. We were only on one planet, so this will be simple to put back together. Set our characters. Okay. I'm going to shuffle the starter items. First is the Galactic Nabber from Earth, which we've had before, which is kind of handy. Uses advanced Earth technology to retrieve items from long distances, and it lets us discard this item to retrieve a discarded challenge boosher or assist item. This is an assist item, so I'm going to put that down here. Grabber stick, retrieve discarded item. Next we have the Haymog Karma Inducer. It's that little contraption there. Device created on Haymog that hastens karmic retribution in any situation. Discard this card when you lose a challenge to reduce any EPM meter movement penalty to zero. Nice. Karma inducer. Reduce EPM meter penalty to zero. Okay. Next we have the silicon crystal cube. Premonition device from the glass planet Silica. Thousand times more accurate than a crystal ball from Earth. Discard this card at any time to reveal one face down signal booster disc. Those are on our game board. Those little circly doodads on the planets. There's a number under each one of those, which tells us how much we raise the signal tracker by. Um, I was gonna do something. raise our death count from one to two. Lovely. Okay. So, uh, let's do this. Silicon. 
silicon, crystal, reveal, signal, disk. Okay. Lastly, we have the Fulopian rocket fuel. Rocket fuel. Gotta go fast. Frothy fuel concoction made of super potent fallopian tree sap. Makes you go fast. Discard this card when traveling to a new planet. Increase EPM meter by only one per each path segment traveled. Rocket fuel. Um, EPM plus one instead of plus two. Okay, that's done. That part of the setup is done. Now, we find where the start of this game is. I didn't put all these cards well, the cards are in planet order, but the... Oh, I think the beginning is in this deck. Oh, there's more starter items under here. No, wait. No, those are the ones I just put back. Oh my gosh, I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. Okay, for those of you who don't know, there's the evil power master and what he looks like. Focus. Focus. Good enough. I don't want to read all of this over again. Uh, I'll give you a summary. So, we've traveled back in time to the beginning of when this all started. <laughs> we are on the planet Lakeus. We are uh, at the Congress, and we heard the evil Power Master proclaim his intent to destroy the uh, system. And we are a rapid force command of characters prepared to try to find the evil power master before he completes his evil plan. So, we are going to decide which planet we're going to start with. We've been to Kronor and Aruth. We can go back and try again. And Silica, we can try again. I don't know how many times... We're gonna keep trying until <laughs> we're tired of it. Till we win. Till people stop showing up. He has access to the blur spell. I'm sorry, UT. I don't know anything about D and D. <laughs> I don't know what that is. You'll have to educate me. Earth, Silica, Cronor, Fallup, Lekus, Void, Proxima. Haymong or Aerith. It's like cat zoomies? What? I'm so lost and confused. We get to we get to start anywhere without the plus um to EPM meter by the way. So it doesn't have to be right next to us. I'll let that pull run for a minute. See last time we played this and we failed so badly that we didn't we didn't get to travel back in time. 
we just left to a completely different system where the evil power master decided to try his shenanigans in a completely new system. This time we get to try again. At Fallout. So let's find out what happens on Fallout. Let me put our ship there. Since this is our starting planet, we're not going to have a, the penalty for that. It's only when we are actually traveling. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Here is a picture. a bunch of trees back there in the background. After a harrowing trip through hyperlight, the ship enters normal space near Fallop, a wild, woolly, and untamed world at the edge of the system. Fallop is packed with dense forests, windy plains, and surly attitudes. It is home to oversized plants that know not how to stop growing, and oversized beasts that Know not how to love. Before we continue on that, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. In those starter cards, like items or certain data points and stuff, just want to double check. I think the only thing we do is choose a planet. Yeah, I was right. Okay, I just want to check. Fallop orbits a large star and has a near-constant growing season. Early attempts to colonize the planet failed when settlers were lost in the verdant wilds or, or were beset by terrible attacks from the loveless beasts. The most recent colony has fared better, allowing time for an agricultural research team to begin studying the planet's runaway growth. Orbiting Fallop, announces Dante. Chen nods. What is the status of the colony, he asks. The intense solar flare activity has subsided, says Dante, but magnetic field disruptions intermittently prevent scans. That sentence was rough. Let me start that again. Let me drink some more wine. <sighs> Sorry again. The intense solar flare activity has subsided, says Dante, but magnetic field disruptions intermittently prevent scans. The colony has been out of touch for days, says Terra. Could be the flares. Could be the evil power master. Communication with the colony could, should be possible, says Flipto. Since time is reset, I'm going to rename Flipto to Flipto. And, uh, Rackham's just gonna deal with it. He's gonna be super salty, but he's not here. Uh, communication with the colony should be possible, says Flipto, but I have no, re but I have received no response yet. That is why we lost. Cause of cause we changed his name, that's why we lost? Maybe. It's Rackham's fault? We can blame it on Rackham? Okay. We'll have to land to get answers, says Chen. Dante, take us down. The comm beeps loudly, cutting Chen off mid-sentence. Dante's head pops open and extends an extra arm to punch a button and play the message. Fallop's largest moon. Please send help. SOS. This is Research Group 32. We are stranded on Arban, Fallop's largest moon. Please send help. A looping message originating from Arban, says Dante as he toggles off the comm. Isn't your cousin in... starts Terra. That's right, says Chen. Colin was sent from Lacus to Fallop as part of a Research Group 32. He gave me a gift before he left. We get an item. Um, first, let me show you this cute picture of Dante doing something at the comm. 
something? I don't know. There's an arm poking out of his head, though. Alright, let me draw this item. Binoculars. There they are. There they are. Hyperthermal binoculars. This device can detect and display heat through dense material that the human eye cannot see through, such as the dense verdant growth and follow. This gives us a plus one to perception. Uh, Flipto is perceivable with plus one. He's the only one with advantage to perception. We might want to give him that extra boost. I will let you decide. With a pole. Un momento, por favor. Mm -mm -mm. While we're doing that, let me just do some shout outs because I'm just now thinking about it. Uti is one of the best Tailspire builders. Mm -mm. Should have done this earlier, but I didn't think about it. Nurse Central is my husband lover. I know, I know Panda, yes. Um, did you guys vote? <laughs> Two of you did. Anyone else here? Anyone else here? Thank you, T. We've got Panda does all kinds of homebrewy, map making, video gamey stuff. Alright, let me. Hi, Slashkey! Oh no, Slashkey, you should go to bed. Bed would be more comfortable than chair. Bed is nice, chair is not. Flipto! What are we even doing? <laughs> Oh, we're giving him a challenge booster. That's kind of funny. Oh, um, let's give a shout out to Slashkey. No, Slashkey, I know. It's like midnight for you, isn't it? Or past midnight? The music is very nice, yes. It's very, it's probably not helping you at all. Uh, Slashkey does Tailspire streams and Twitch plays. Alright. Back on task. Challenge booster. Flipto gets the binoculars. Which is a perception plus one. I'm glad you guys can hear the music this time. Last week we had some difficulty with that. For some reason, I don't know why. Um, who did I miss? Let's give let's give more shout outs. Let's give all the love to people. GM Workshop is the best GM. You can fight me on that fact all day long. I don't care who you are. <laughs> okay. Flipto gets that one. Keep a challenge booster. <laughs> Black Rose knows what's up. Okay. Oh, we have to make a decision now about how um how we're gonna approach this planet. Let's find out. 
shall we? Do we land on Fallup or respond to the SOS, which was on the moon of this planet? Arbon. Yes, the largest moon. Respond to the SOS on... Well, it just says SOS. I'm not going to add text. We'll just do straight what the card says. The SOS was coming from Arbon, this planet's largest moon. Take a stretch break. Maybe we'll do that after we vote on this. We'll take a little stretchy break for like a minute. Who else didn't I shout out? Oh, I know one. He's lurking. Crow does uh, homebrewy stuff, and I think he uses Roll20 for the most part. Um, he does map building on there, too. He's a chill dude. He has a pleasant voice to listen to. Uh, where are we at? Did we vote? Did we finish voting? Respond to the SOS. Okay, before we do that, we're gonna take just a little break, just a little stretch, top off the wine glass, and be right back.
for the follow. Thanks for the host. Appreciate you. That's awesome. All right, we're going to respond to the SOS on the moon. Not dude, the moon. Me and Nerd have inside jokes now. Deal with it. The Lacunian code requires us to respond to official distress signals, says Chen. Agreed, says Flipdo. But this could be a trap to lure us away from Fallop. It won't hurt to take a closer look, says Terra. Dante, put us in orbit. Setting course now, confirms Dante. The ship arcs around Fallop toward its largest moon. A thick jungle covers most of Arbon. A few large rivers and a huge lake are visible from orbit, but the rest is obscured by foliage. Can we determine if that SOS is genuine? Asks Chen. Okay, we have a challenge. It is a perception challenge to analyze the distress signal. Our character with strength in perception is only Flipto. He also has a challenge booster with the binoculars. Oh, binocular. Binoculars. Um, our challenge level, since we're starting over and we're at the bottom, it's four. So we need at least a three on the die to complete the challenge successfully. We have the option to use our challenge booster. We'd run the risk of if we roll a one, we fail and we lose our challenge booster. So I will ask you if we want to use our challenge booster or not, because we have to decide before we uh, attempt the challenge. Use binoculars, no binoculars. So you can type in a one or a two to cast your vote. Whether, we not, whether or not we use our challenge booster of binoculars. Oh, I didn't even give you guys the option to like vote on a character. I just assumed. Do you guys want to use Flipto? <laughs> it's <laughs> the rank. It's fine. Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys have that option, too. Okay, we're gonna use binoculars if we use Flipto. But we can use any of the four characters. I'll let you decide, chat. I'm looking at our assist items to see if any of that would help too, because I forgot about that too. Maybe we shouldn't have done this planet yet. Maybe we left leave that for next week. <laughs> None of these items would help us anyway, so it doesn't matter. Vote for Flipto. Do it. Good job. Anyone else? No? Okay. Nerd, go ahead and roll. You need a roll? A two? Is that right? Three. Plus two is five. We did it! Good job! <gasps> okay. I'm tired. Not too tired. Tired enough to be silly. Raise signal tracker by one and continue below. One. The 
SOS is genuine, says Dante. Flipto analyzes Dante's data. Interesting, he says. There is a background echo consistent with the evil power master's signals. So he may be here, says Chen. We should land quickly and locate the research team. I really hope Colin is alright, says Chen. I'm sure he's fine, says Tara, consoling Chen. I think it makes more sense to conduct an aerial search first. Oh, look. Look, Tara's being like... Oh, Chen's freaking out. Oh, my cousin. Tara's like, it's okay, buddy. Everything's fine. Okay. I'm struggling. It's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Do we land on Arbon to investigate, or search from orbit, which may be safer? You decide. Twitch plays. Yeah, poor Chan. He's freaking out. Do we land on Arvin or search from orbit? Chat's like, let's get down and dirty on Arvin. We ain't scared. No big deal. All right, let's go for it. Dante pilots the ship to the southern hemisphere of Arbon and descends near a large, bare patch of ground, a dry lake bed. This is the obvious landing spot, says Chen. It's wide, flat, and open. They may have crashed in the surrounding jungle, says Flipto, frowning thoughtfully. There's a strange crack down there, notes Dante, preparing to land. It appears to be growing. Uh, optional free action. If we have... Datas, we do not. Okay. Skip that. The atmosphere is thick, but breathable, Flipto says, checking the gauges. Terra exits the ship. Why is the ground all squishy? She asks. Life sign detected, exclaims Dante. Finally, says Chen. Where? I have a feeling the life sign is the ground. Just a guess. Dante emits a loud beep. All around us, the ground shakes violently. Called it. <laughs> Back to the fizzlet, cries Chen. Now. Oh no. Uh, let me show you a picture. Pretty picture. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Picture, picture, picture. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? I was focusing on my fingers. I'll figure this out. Focus! Alright. We have a required dexterity challenge. We already used Flip Doe. I didn't make him inactive. Now he is inactive. Who do we have that's dexterous? We have Chen as a plus one. Tara has a plus one. Dante has a negative one. We have no discarded items that we could retrieve with a grabber stick, so none of our assist items are helpful. So let me give you a little pulley doodad. of who is going to complete this dexterous challenge. Chen or Don, or Chen or Tara has dexterity. As 
I'm going through these cards, I'm thinking about how I someday convert this into a D&D &D campaign. And it's getting me pretty excited about how characters will... How players will navigate these kinds of challenges and how I uh, relay that information. It's going to be interesting. I hope it, I can get something together like that. I'm going to go with Nerd on this one until he kills us all. Well, he did kill us all once. Why not do it again? You'll do just fine as a DM? Maybe. I think these cards will be helpful for that. I just have to figure it out. Alright, we have Terra. Oh my god. <sighs> she has no challenge boosters. She has a plus one to dexterity. Our challenge level is a four, so we need to roll at least a three. Go ahead and type exclamation roll. We need at least a three. Watch it be a six. I just jinxed it. It's a three! Good job! We're going to raise the signal tracker by one. And draw a data clip. The jagged crack in the ground splits apart as the crew jumps inside the ship. Before the airlock even closes, the main thrusters fire. The ship rises into the air as an immense mouth opens beneath it. A Wimb Space Worm. The giant worm rises with the fizzlet and its mouth begins closing around the plucky little craft. Afterburners propel the ship through a gap in the worm's teeth. The fizzlet escapes and takes off into the distance. Whoo, that was a lucky escape. We almost got eaten. Whoa. Whoa, chat. Intense. That was quite a scene. Uh, we used Terra just now. The thing about DMing, oh, I mean, a sports umpire no one agrees with anything you say, but they have to accept it or just not play the game. You, so you get to not care what they think. Yeah. I have to get over um, me feeling like I'll get into a spot where I'll have no idea what to say and then just crash and burn in my brain. Um. But I think maybe with these cards, it'll help me get back on track. I just have to get over, like, trying to figure out being on that on-the-spot type of improv thing. Maybe with the right people that, um, of me doing it for for the first time. Like, if I just do it with Nerd, at least that'll, like, get me over that hump of trying it for the first time. Um, I don't know. Anyway. Off topic. Where am I? Distracted. Okay. Anyway. With a swirl of dust, the ship lands on a sandbar in a bend of a raging river. The crew steps in onto dark brown sand. The air is hot and steamy. The distress signal is this direction, says Dante, extending an arm toward the looming jungle. The vegetation is gigantic and dense. We'll need a machete, Chen says. Take a- oh gosh, you guys are saying things. It's fine after you try, trust me. Yeah, Black Rose, you've said you that you're a demon, that's cool. I'll try it eventually, I'll get around to it. Nerd wants me to uh, do a one shot for his birthday. Hey, Jesse. Did nerd drag you in here? 
Um, from your game. Take a look at Sly Flourish's Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. It shows you how you have to prep in 10 minutes to fill his gaps. Oh, okay. That's interesting. That sounds like it'd be helpful. I did not even know he kindly reminded me. Oh. Well, that was nice of him. Alright, we get a data card. Yeah, I've seen uh, Rackham t um, kind of go through like a review of the Lazy DM, the Lazy Dungeon Master books. It seems uh, pretty neat. Uh, some nice tips in there to help. I mean, if it's lazy, then that sounds like it's right up my alley. Oh my word, look at this item. This is quite an item we just just uh, picked up. Let's see if you guys can... A vibro machete. Look at that sucker. That's intense. That's like a fantasy type craziness. They they were some of my first books. Oh, okay. Pretty cool. A weapons locker inside the airlock contains a machete which vibrates electronically. It's a vibro machete. Demand for these things runs high on Lycos. This is a challenge booster. It gives us a strength with... Oh, I can't see that. It gives us strength with two extra dice rolls, is what that means. I'm pretty certain. It's a vibro machete. I know it sounds kind of risque. Like a vibro what? <laughs> it looks like a sword. I don't know why it's called a machete. It's uh, it's interesting. Let me double check. If it shows two, uh, you roll a die twice and add the numbers together. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, so we have to decide who to give this to. Um, Chen is the only one with a advantage to strength. Everyone else has either no advantage or a disadvantage to strength. Um, so let me give you a poll. to Chen. Yeah, I think Chen could use a vibro machete for sure. He would love it, actually. If you want to give it to Chen, type in a one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, GM, how is your, uh, Ice cream. Jim! Rack him. This is what happened. We... <laughs> the evil power master got to the uh, end of his evil plot. He was like, successful. And somehow we traveled back in time to the beginning. So his name reset. Isn't that crazy? I'll let you give him a new name. It can't be Rex McCheese. Finally got my maps for the dungeon. My party are in done on paper and now digital. Nice. Moving on up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how, like, converting this game into a, a, D, a D and D campaign. How I would go about with all these planets. Fuzzy McFluffy Tail. Okay. <laughs> You got it. That's not all gonna fit. I 
just recorded the Pokemon intro. There's an intro? Oh, I'm so excited. All right, I need to end this poll. Getting distracted. Um. Getting distracted. Hollow Fox's um, Pokemon mod. Does it like put the Pokemon in the Tailspire boards? Is sure exactly what his mod does that makes it Pokemon. Okay, we're giving Chen a challenge booster. We're giving him the vibrator. <laughs> oh no. Vibro machete. Here, rack them, I'll show you. Like I'm not, I'm not lying. Look, it's a. It looks like a sword. They're calling it a vibro machete. Obviously, it's a vibrator. <laughs> this game. Strength plus. Strength, um, with two, two D6. That's how that works. <laughs> uh, we're fine. We're hanging in there. I think I'm doing everything correctly still. Am I missing anything? Let me know if I'm missing anything. It's very likely I could be missing things because I'm getting super distracted. The machete makes quick work of the vegetation as Dante guides the crew toward the signal. You didn't tell me how your ice cream was. I'll wait. Did you? Let me scroll up. What kind of ice cream did you get? They were closed? Did you at least go to like the grocery store and get a tub of ice cream? And make sundaes at home? I'll wait. <laughs> I'll read. Uh, suddenly, predatory vines grab Fuzzy and Tara, encircling her arms and his legs and pulling them both off the ground. Help, calls Fuzzy. That's good. Chen leaps and slashes the vines around Fuzzy's legs. The Martian falls on his head. Tara lifts her vine-covered arms and bites through the vines to free herself. She's got strong teeth. Look at this girl. She drops to the ground. Now he had popcorn instead? He couldn't have popcorn ice cream? That would have been something. Dante beeps excitedly. Chen turns, expecting more sentient vines. Instead, a hairy beast that is part ape, part owl, crashes through the jungle. It opens its mouth and roars, then scratches the ground with massive claws. Oh my word, look at this guy. Look at, look, look at it. It's terrifying. Focus, focus. I want you to focus. Good enough. Sorry. I'll figure that out someday. This is a strength challenge to defeat the owl ape. We have no assist items to help us. None of those are helpful for this situation. Uh, so let me give you the uh, options of what to do here. We're going to choose a character to complete this challenge. We can't choose Tara. She's now inactive. She's already done a challenge. Chen has plus one to strength plus an extra dice roll. 
So we add the two dice rolls together, plus the one. Um, I'm not gonna say we use that right now. First we have to choose a character, then we choose whether or not we use a challenge booster. No one else has an advantage to strength. Dante has a negative one. So... Oh, wait! Oh, I broke it. Hold on. Start over. Go. Yes, go. perfect and most agreeable. We're gonna have Chen do this challenge. Does Chen want to use his brand new vibro machete thingy? I'll ask you guys. Use roll a one, we lose the challenge booster forever. FYI. Our challenge rating right now is four. We already have a plus one. Oops, where's my board at? There it is. So we would have to roll a three or higher to win without the challenge booster. We have a tie. Do we have a, a tie breaker? Did Uti run off because I insulted him? Maybe. Oh, there he is. Oh, Black Rose, no. What are you doing? You made it tie again. <laughs> Any lurkers out there want to help? Mmm, Black Rose, you just love doing that, didn't you? Lurkers, I need you. I'm sorry, I was working out my best argument. <laughs> Break the tie. I wonder if someone I know does this. Mmm, Black Rose does. <laughs> Do the tiebreaker? <sighs> I could just choose, but I won't. Anyone? 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 Okay. Oh, number one, says the random command. We're gonna use the vibrator. Okay. Go ahead and roll, chat. Exclamation roll. Nat six, look at that, easy. Uh, see, I knew it existed. <laughs> Yes, Black Rose, yes. That's what this stream has become. Okay. Chen succeeded in defeating the ape, the owl ape. This guy, the scary dude. He punched him in the face! In the face! We're gonna raise our signal tracker by one. 
draw a data card. Okay, let me read this and not just make an ooh sound. Chen's cousin, Colin, steps out of the jungle and fires a tranquilizer dart into the owl's, owl ape's neck. It falls and passes out. Colin tosses the gun to the crew and says, Follow me if you want to live. A lo- Isn't that, um... Is that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Help me. I hear- okay. I can't do- I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I can't- I'm not the master of voices like Rackham is. A logo on the gun reads, Earth's number one Trank. Can't or won't? Mm, I think we know. Trank gun! This gives us a strength plus one. I'm going to let you guys decide who gets the Trank Gun. Um, Chen has the Vibra Machete, which is 2d6, plus he already has a plus one. No one else has advantage to Strength. Dante has a negative one. You can only use one challenge booster per challenge. So if we give it to Chen, we could have him choose between either no challenge booster or the vibrator <laughs> or the trank gun. He's not Rex anymore. Time reset and he became a new person. New Martian from Mars. All right, it's going to Fuzzy. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a Martian. Trank gun. Strength plus one. I don't know how a tranquilizer gun gives you additional strength. Maybe it gives you advantage on your target because they're no longer strong and you are stronger than it. Sure. Whatever. Okay. Uh, do 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 do. New card, here we go. Continuing the story. The crew enters a small clearing in the jungle where the injured research crew has made a camp. We saw you land, cousin, says Colin. It's good to see you. What happened? asks Chen. We were in the pod performing a biological survey of Arbon when the attack started, he says as he turns back to the wounded. It was horrible. Hundreds of missiles rose from the moon and raced toward Fallop. There's nothing we could do but try to escape. I take it you failed, says Fuzzy. <laughs> this guy, this picture of Fuzzy, he does not look like someone named Fuzzy, I'm just gonna say. He looks more like a Rex than a Fuzzy, but can't do nothing about that. Commander Chen shoots the Martian a stern look. Colin laughs. We're researchers, not crack pilots. What's a crack pilot? He says. Several missiles locked onto us, and here we are. You're lucky to be alive, says Tara with a smile. Her smile fades as a horde of creatures crash into the clearing, led by a giant owl ape. Didn't we just do that? Did a new one come in with a horde of creatures behind it? I mean, there could be more than one on this moon. I mean, why not? Alright, chat. This is another strength challenge. 
Luckily, we gave Fuzzy a Trank Gun, which might be helpful. But I'll let you decide who is going to attempt this challenge. Fuzzy or Dante? I'd go with Fuzzy, because Dante is not great at strength. if we're going to use this trank gun. Our challenge rating is four. He has no natural advantage, but the trank gun would give him a plus one, so he would have to roll at least a three if we used the gun. Or we could save it for another challenge. Because if we roll a 1, then the gun is gone forever. So now, instead of monkeys chasing us everywhere, we have giant owl apes to deal with. Just still a half monkey. Just with feathers and wings and a beak. Maybe? It has scary teeth. And wings. And feathers. Nothing bad. <laughs> oh no, Uti. Nerd, where you at? You have to vote. What are you doing? Thank you. Gosh. Can you imagine? Oh, okay, is that all? Oh, gosh. Alright, chat. Exclamation roll. We need at least a two. <laughs> you guys, why'd you let nerd roll? our gun. Wah, wah. Nerd, it's always you ruining everything for everyone. <laughs> well, at least so we don't move the meter up anywhere, so we don't need that board. echoes in the clearing as the owl ape's army rushes forward. A rhino hawk charges the wounded as rooster constrictors and piranha parrots swarm the crew. After a pitched battle, the wounded hybrids retreat, but one crew member lies in a pool of blood, gored by a rhino horn. Yikes. Disaster. Okay, we are gonna raise the meter after all. One, two, three, four. Yikes! And this is going away. That number six doesn't matter. And we have to choose a new planet to explore, because we got walloped on this one. Okay. Let's figure this out. 
So, we failed this planet. We now have to choose which planet to try next to find the evil power master. Every path, you can see that there are paths connecting each planet. Every one we travel, it's going to raise the evil power master meter by two. Um, we fail, yes. Mm -hmm. um, each planet has um, two skill types underneath the planet, which is supposed to indicate the types of challenges that are on that planet. We can take a look at our characters to determine um, what would be most advantageous for that character for whatever challenges are on that planet. We only have Dante left at the moment. Chen has a lot of boosting going on with strength. Fuzzy does with perception. He has a perception plus one. But Dante's our current active character, so he'd be the one doing any challenge next. Um, we can look at the planets that are around us. Let's see. Um, Proxima Centauri has dex and strength. Strength is uh, good for Chen. Um, Earth has perception, which is good for... Flipto. Uh, Dante has a plus to piloting and diplomacy. Piloting and diplomacy, which is Lakus. So that's the planets immediately around us. Um, so let me give you guys the poll of where we go next, which will be next week because we're reaching the end of my ability to do this anymore today. Uh, oops. like we're going to earth Ooh, fun let's go ahead and move our little ship Doo -doo 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 -doo. we're gonna raise the evil power master meter by two because time is passing and he has more opportunity to complete his evil plans earth sucks oh no well here we are um, alright, so that's it for me tonight. Thanks again, everyone, for coming and hanging out and lurking and playing and being generally awesome. 
let's find someone to raid. Thank you, Rackham. Appreciate you. I'm becoming older. Isn't that the worst? Uh, why is it? Is Uti streaming? It has Uti listed here twice on my raiding options. you back. Oh no, you're gone. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Um. Oh yeah, maybe. It shows him online while hosting. Oh, okay. I don't have anyone else on. Maybe we look at the board game category. What do you guys want to do? You're probably just going to leave and do something. Agricola? It's in English? We could raid someone playing Agricola. I have that game IRL. What do you guys want to do? <laughs> I could just end it, huh? Ooh, someone else is playing Agricola. return? I need to do that. <laughs> Not stream it, but I need to do my tax return. <laughs> I'm just gonna end it, because I don't, I don't know when this, no. What's, what are people doing in the Twitch Plays category? Twitch Plays Pokemon? What's that? Once again, the chaos Let me watch his ad first. They have 110 people been streaming for 30 hours? Twitch plays. Let me look at the Twitch plays. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like doing something Pokemon related because Rackham's doing a Pokemon thing. There's a lot of people doing stuff. Alright. This looks interesting. Yeah, that's what I'm working on, Rackham. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna ra raid this random person doing a Twitch plays with Pokemon. So, do that if you want, or go to bed like me. So, um, thanks again. Catch you next time.